right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Kerry Gard, who is over in the UK, in the, actually in the Channel Islands. Uh, if you don't know where those are, I suggest you look them up. Beautiful places, <laughs> beautiful place. Uh, and Kerry is the COO at MKG Marketing, a digital marketing agency of experts who help tech and healthcare brands grow big. And today we're going to talk about digital marketing because uh, here, Kerry, here's one of the challenges I think people face nowadays in regardless of what business they're in, is it seems like the digital channels just keep increasing. And it's starting to get kind of confusing as where should I be? Where shouldn't I be? You're getting so much conflicting advice from people. So how do you, how do you go about figuring out which are the right digital channels for you? Well, you guys start first with your, with your end goal. So mm -hmm. when we started eight years ago, that was why we started was all about measurable media. So if you can't, if you can't start at what you're trying to accomplish, then you can't really figure out what channels you need to be in. And so you really need to figure out what your KPIs are and then work backwards. And then in doing so, you start to layer things on. So starting with what we call the lowest hanging fruit, which is generally um, SEO or PPC, which is where we thrive. Mm -hmm. And then once you build those channels up and you gain the momentum and then you can start adding things like, um, uh, more awareness sort of channels and those sort of things, but you got to start with what you're trying to do and where your audience is and then figure out how to build that bridge from your message to the right people. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's talk about SEO just for a moment uh, here because I do think that a lot of people think they know what SEO is or certainly <laughs> they know what the acronym stands for, obviously search engine optimization. But when you really get into it, a lot of people don't really understand what it, what it means or how it works. So maybe you could just explain to people, like, what is SEO and you know, how does it really operate? Because it changes a lot, right? Because with algorithm changes, et cetera. Oh, it's constantly changing. And our experts are on top of that, I can tell you. And so I'm going to speak a little out of turn and they're going to listen to this and then they're probably going to correct me. But, it, you know, from a very high level, you know, SEO is just about being found on the web, right? So making sure that your website rises to the top and people know how to find you. And I think what people don't understand is how much of an art it is in making sure that you have all the right building blocks in place from your technical SEO to the content, to the keywords, and sort of marrying these three, three things together in a way that allows you to be found when people are searching for you. So, and, and to even simplify it further, it's basically for people who've never, maybe never heard of SEO, it's, you know, when you go to Google and you type in a keyword, uh, you know, you have the top three searches, which are paid yeah. searches. And then at the bottom, that's all organic. And like I said, it's an art to make sure that things that your website gets found. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, something that you probably come across a lot is that uh, when working with businesses is that they maybe don't know how to properly describe themselves. They don't understand the the phrases and keywords that are very pertinent to their industry or their business. Uh, and, and I think that's probably a lot of what, you know, part of the initial process is really helping people articulate their business. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, when you can really simplify your business down to the keywords in which people are searching for, then you're exactly where you need to be. And then you can really harness it, you know, hone in on what that messaging is from even you know, your homepage being very clear in layman's terms as to what it is that you do. You know, people don't want jargon. They want to be mm -hmm. spoken to in a really simple way. And when you're looking at, especially tech companies who have these really complex solutions to try and help them sort of, you know, they create this bubble sort of around them, yeah. around what they think they're, how their audience is talking about their product. But then when you actually go to Google and you start really you know, looking at how people are navigating these types of solutions, what they're actually working for, you sometimes have to make a really sharp pivot and, you know, to really simple language, which is hard sometimes to wrap your head around when you're trying to own this whole new market and you're trying to pioneer, uh, you know, a whole new tech space. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know, agree, and I think it's ex it's extremely difficult to bring it down to to simple terms sometimes, and that's why I, I was uh, you know say that uh, simple doesn't equate to easy. You know, you would mm -hmm. say like you know make it sound simple, and say yeah, but that's not the easiest thing in the world to to do, and uh, and I guess also because we live in this kind of uh, soundbite culture, yeah, this uh, where everything is and um, people are so distracted, is that you don't really have time to have people like understand or get into you know really read deeply you need to get your message across very quickly and then draw them in yeah and it's about really surrounding your audience nowadays you know before would be you know you could be okay doing one channel and really owning that channel and being really mm -hmm. present in it and maxing it out or, or just doing seo or just doing ppc or or even just you know doing pr there was you know you could just go through one channel and really own it. And nowadays you really need to be everywhere and you need to surround your audience with as much useful and helpful content as possible so that they're constantly learning about you. The audiences these days are so savvy, right? We're all mm -hmm. researchers at heart these days. We know that when we're going to look for a product, we're not going to call a salesperson out of the gate anymore. We're going to go do our own homework to figure out if this is the right product for what we need. And then when we have a bunch of questions we can't get answered, that's when we might pick up the phone. But the more, the more we can find the answers ourselves, the more trust that builds in the product and the brand. And so when we do pick up the phone, it's like we're ready to go opposed to being need to, you know, be sold to essentially. It's just, you know, so you definitely don't want mm -hmm. to pitch just one channel. You want to surround your audience in a really thoughtful way. Yeah, and and I just uh, I just want to underline what you just said there about you know helpful content because I do think one of the issues out there that uh, that happens a lot is that people start producing content for content's sake or not high quality content and they start just churning out. And to be honest, the last thing the world needs is is more junk content. I think there's plenty that that market is saturated right now. Uh, so how do you help people understand what the difference between really high quality content is and just fluff? Yeah, I mean, fluff is normally things that aren't actionable or helpful, right? It's thought leadership pieces or, you know, higher thinking, you know, pieces that don't really, we that don't really give you anything, right? Mm -hmm. Really good content is actionable. Uh, it sort of should feel like you're giving away your secret sauce almost. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, I'm telling you how to do these things when it's, I want to do them for you. But right. the reality is people don't really want to do things for themselves. They just want to know how it's done. And so it's nice if they can take a stab at it and then realize mm -hmm. maybe they need some more help or if they do get it, then great. And then they're on their way and, and then they weren't for you, right? But, you know, it's got to be actionable. It's got to be something that they can pick up and run with and go do. The other thing about content that's, that's sticky that allows your website to do really well from an SEO perspective is deep content. So, you know, a lot of times we'll suggest to clients to build hubs. Like you have this mm -hmm. keyword you want to get out in front of. Um, we had a client who wanted to go after the word agile. Uh, right. at a time where Agile was sort of just breaking in of what it is. And so we built an entire hub around what Agile is with multiple pages and lots of deep content so that you really could understand what this thing is. And then they own it. And if you type in Agile, mm -hmm. they're, they're number one. And so it's, you know, blogging for the sake of blogging Sure, that might help your website, but it's got to be around the keywords people are searching for, and it's got to be actionable. Yeah, and and I like what you said too about the the deep content because I do think there is an appetite for good quality content to go deep into it, and I think sometimes yeah, you know, it's almost a dichotomy in many ways. It's like yeah, you have to be you have to be simple and snappy and able to attract people's attention. But once you attract their attention, then you need to have some substance behind it. And I think that's where some people fall down. They either go one or the other. They either go f straight for the substance or they just stay at the superficial level. Agreed. Yeah, you really do need to balance both.
Mm -hmm. And so, um, how do you how do you help people when, as I said, you know, there's there's all of these you know different channels and platforms cropping up, and it's very easy to get distracted and to jump on the latest. Uh, you know, I need to be, I need to be on TikTok now or whatever. Um, I mean, how do you guide? Yeah, how do you guide? I, I was going to say nobody really needs to be on TikTok, but that's the <laughs> um, But anyway, um, so how do you, how do you guide people into not like running after shiny new toys all the time and sticking with, you know, the places that they should be? Um, I mean, we're all for trying new things and actually one of our values around is is big picture and within thinking about the big picture you got to be fearless in your ideas of mm -hmm. you know driving to that end goal for clients and sometimes these big ideas are great and they we find something new we didn't think we'd be able to find and sometimes they flop but now we know right so um you know in terms of going after the shiny objects it's just got to be really strategic does it make sense mm -hmm. is that where your audience is is that where they're engaged if you're trying to if, you know, for B2B tech, TikTok doesn't make sense. But if you're the latest Nike shoe, probably mm -hmm. does make sense. So it really depends on your product and what you're trying to do and who your audience, again, who your audience is and what your main KPI is. We always come mm -hmm. back to that KPI and that audience, because if you can't justify it for those two things, then it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and we can move on. And, and that's really what it boils down to. And, and when you work with people, how often do you find that the KPIs are not well defined? Because I think this is a struggle for a lot of businesses in general anyway, not just, uh, not just when it comes to digital marketing, whatever, but just in general that KPIs are either fuzzy or they are old or they haven't been updated um, or, they are, or they're never really measured. The good thing in tech where, where we strive and, and do our best and do best for clients is that they do have relatively strong KPIs. Um, and if they don't, then, you know, if they're telling us that they're going after like website visits, mm -hmm. we go, that's great for SEO because that's a lot, like we have a lot of control over that. But what at the end of the day is your bottom line? Because we can drive all the traffic in the world, but if it's not the right traffic or the quality of traffic you need, mm -hmm. then you're going to be getting a ton of junk leads that then your poor sales team's got to sift through. So at the end of the day, we really need to look at that pipeline create or the at least leads to know we're getting you the right people in the door. So we mm -hmm. will push further down the funnel if we can. And if we can't, and they're like, well, we don't have it wired up and we have all these systems, but they, you know, we can measure SEO and PPC through Google Analytics, but we don't have that tied to our CRM. We can help with that. And we want to make right. sure that before we spend a dollar of your money, we can know that if you put a dollar in at this end, this is the pipeline create you're going to get at the other end. That's why we focused on SEO, PPC, and analytics, because you can't really do SEO and PPC without the analytics piece of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and I and then I think that's that that's that, that's critical, and it, it's fascinating too because I do think that uh, sometimes, you know, there's a human nature thing where having lots and lots of leads flowing in feels really good. Uh, I also call it the, the you know the feel good funnel is when you have tons and tons of early stage leads in, and it makes you feel really good but then 99% of them fall out. It's much harder to be that more disciplined is where you are really going after quality over quantity because that can be a little scarier. Yeah, I mean, to, the, to um, you know, people outside the marketing and sales team, it does feel a bit scary because it's like we should have more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if we, can, if we can hone in on exactly the right people and get all of our systems built around those people, then we can scale. Then, mm -hmm. it, then it's easy because then you can build in things like retargeting. Then you can build in things like lookalike audiences through PPC where you say, okay, here's my right audience. Go find me more people that look like this. You know, there's lots of ways that you can then scale to, you know, to get more of those leads, but you have to start. So you don't want to waste money and throw it out mm -hmm. the door essentially. But if you start small and you start building up that, those right people onto your website in the right way, then you know, scaling is not a problem. Yeah, and I like that idea what you just said about, you know, you identify, you, you identify, you know, a target, then you replicate that. And when you do it kind of systematically, because I do think sometimes people try to go too big too quickly, you know, try to go too broad too quickly. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's people who don't necessarily know who their audience is. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, well, let's just go after everybody and then we'll yeah. see who sticks. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you can do that, but you're going to, you need a lot of money to quickly see what's working and what's not. You're going to lose a lot of money up front to find it that mm-hmm. way. Yeah, and and especially, I mean, I think nowadays, obviously, we're in in pay per click and and SEO and all of that. It's, I mean, things are getting more and more expensive. Um, things are getting more and more competitive, as you mentioned earlier. I mean, once upon a time, there was a couple of ads on the page. Now there's like ads at the top. There's ads at the bottom. There's there's so much real estate being being taken up. So in many ways, you can't afford to experiment in real time, can you? I mean, you definitely can experiment. There's definitely things you want to always be testing and learning, um, but you want to be thoughtful about it. You don't Mm -hmm. want to just go test everything under the sun. You want to, you know, you want to test one thing at a time and see if you get lift uh, and see if that thing helped or or didn't. Um, Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you are, you know, like I said, if you don't really know who your audience is, you don't really know where they are, then yeah, you're just going to be losing a ton of money trying to just test all of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you're spreading your money too thin across too many things you're trying to test, then you can't get a real read on what's working either. So, you know, out of the gate, slow and steady definitely helps you in the long run of setting the stage thoughtfully. Yeah. And, and pick, and as you said, I mean, doing your research and at the beginning and picking picking your picking your targets or where you're going to invest because yeah that is the other thing is if you try and spread your money too thin and do a lot of things you can't really you know you can't really test it because i mean especially as i said today with the with the cost of things and and competitive Mm -hmm. keywords and all of that kind of stuff you're 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 not even going to rank yeah that's true All right. Well, listen, um, Carrie, is there any last piece of advice you would give to anybody who is uh, re-examining their digital marketing strategy going into 2021? Based on what I've, you know, what my team's been saying and all the podcasting I've been doing as well, I would just say, you know, given what's going on in the world right now, you don't want to stop, but you don't want to speed up so fast that your feet sort of get out from underneath you. So take a breath, look at your audience, look at what they're doing right now, interview your clients, see Mm -hmm. how they found you, see how they're navigating the web, and then, you know, pivot thoughtfully towards what's working and where people are right now. It's a very different world than it was eight months ago. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think the more proactive you are, the the better, because um, yeah, it's a different world and who knows where it's going. And I think uh, that what you just said is like, understand where your customers are today, understand how they're finding you, understand how their businesses are evolving mm-hmm. and changing. And that way you can adapt to that. Um, listen, all of Kerry's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, Kerry, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Sure. Uh, So MKG Marketing is a digital advertising agency specializing in SEO, PPC, and analytics, if you haven't garnered that yet. (laughs) Uh, And I am the COO. My business partner and I started this company eight years ago, again, around wanting to make sure that when clients put money into advertising, they get money out. And we want to help them scale and grow in a really thoughtful manner through transparent and measurable media. Perfect. All right. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. Thank you so much, Kerry, and thank you all for joining us. And I will see you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.